You killed the entire Simpsons, Morty. They're a beloved family, Morty. They're 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 a national uh, treasure, and you killed them. I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. I don't want to go to Relax, jail. Relax, Morty. Calm down. We'll take care of it. It's always exciting to see a cartoon crossover with another cartoon, or maybe some other franchise that doesn't originate on TV. While the majority of cartoon crossovers seem to make sense, there are a select few that just come out of nowhere and you wonder why exactly they even came into existence. Today we'll be taking a look at the top 7 weirdest cartoon crossovers, and the list is going to get stranger as we continue down, so just be prepared for that. If what you're thinking of right now doesn't end up being in the video, then by all means leave it in the comment section. But with all that being said, let's get on to the top 7 weirdest cartoon crossovers. Number 7. Cartoon Hour Characters and Fortnite Okay, okay, I know this isn't the typical cartoon crossover that you're thinking of, hence why it's only number 7 on the list. But still, if you haven't seen the Cartoon Hour characters collide with Fortnite, then you're in for a strange surprise. This was a video uploaded on CN's official YouTube channel, so no, despite its unprofessional nature, this is not fan-made. At first glance, maybe you can shrug this off and say, Oh well, they're just doing random dances, who cares? That's not really Fortnite. But uh, Fortnite is right there, staring at you in the title, plus all the names of the characters dance moves are the exact ones seen in the game. I think all my thoughts can be summed up in the form of a one sentence question. WHY?! Cartoon Eric colliding with this overly popular battle royale game sweeping the nation just makes no sense at all. Clearly, this was made on CN's YouTube channel to cash in on the trend, but it's still sad to see. Nickelodeon is usually the network doing rad stuff such as following what's popular, structuring their videos and commercials to memes that have now died. It's honestly sad to see how big Fortnite has become, because I always see kids nowadays jumping around and doing random dances from the game, constantly talking about singles and duos and wins and oh my god when will the hype die down? You can't escape the Fortnite craze in real life when you're around other kids and then you go on YouTube to find this cartoon or character's Fortnite dance challenge video. The terrible part is that CN's plan worked because this video has over a million views, though to their surprise it got an insane amount of dislikes. Please for my sanity just let this game stop. It wasn't bad when I played, but everything surrounding it has gotten out of hand with its overhype, and now it's infected Steven Universe, Wee Bear Bears, and more. Please wake me up out of this nightmare. to forget seeing this. Number 6 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Teen Titans Go. This is not only one of the weirdest cartoon crossovers out there, but it's also not very well known. When thinking about Teen Titans Go and another show, the episode where they meet the Powerpuff Girls comes to mind, but did you know that the TMNT actually played a role for an episode or two? Well, they only made a brief cameo in Season 1, but Season 2's storyline, Truth, Justice, and What? gave these two crime-fighting teams a battle in the sewers. Pizza has been one of the most important foods shown in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so when you have a Teen Titans Go episode surrounding it, of course there's going to be some sort of crossover between the two. What up, Titan Bros? <gasps> so this is what happened to the world's pizza supply. But why? When we told Robin about the power of pizza, we were just trying to be cool, youngish, mutated karate turtle dudes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one and all to Teenage Mew Titans Ninja Go Turtles! Okay, that doesn't sound right, so uh, forget I said that. Anyway, there's not much you need to know about Truth, Justice, and What, other than that the story leads the Titans to meet up with everyone's favorite turtle team in the sewers. At first, the turtles display their true power as they manage to defeat their foes pretty quickly, though the tides turn as the Titans take victory soon after. Man, I'm saying too many T-words today. I think the 
the weirdest part about this crossover is how it's a Cartoon Arc property meeting a Nickelodeon one. Of course, TMNT didn't originate on Nick, but it's still been there for many years and was a Nicktoon during the time this crossover episode aired. Frequently, if there's two cartoon universes coming together, at the very least, the shows are airing on the same network, but nope, that just didn't happen here. The Titans vs. the Turtles isn't completely out of the question though, since they're both hero teams fighting for the good of the world. It's kinda interesting to know that these two properties are canonically in the same universe, because there are a few more TMNT references throughout Teen Titans Go, not just this sewer fight episode. Number 5. Rugrats and ah, real monsters. This is yet another one of those crossovers that not as many people remember, probably because it's really old. Plus, the actual scenes were short. The monsters appeared in the Rugrats episode called Ghost Story. Its plot surrounds the Rugrats babies journeying through the attic of a mysterious haunted house, where they meet up with the cast of Ah, Real Monsters. Now, because this crossover involves two different old Nicktoons, it makes a lot more sense than the previous ones I talked about so far. But still. Seeing these innocent babies come face to face with the surprisingly creepy creatures is weird, since you don't normally expect that confrontation out of Rugrats. Uh, th there's a yummy chocolate pudding downstairs in the kitchen. Hmm, chocolate pudding or babies? Hmm, it is a very hard decision. What do you think, Icky? Despite typically being a lighthearted show, Halloween changes the game, so it's understandable that the monsters appear. One of the most interesting facts about Ghost Story is that it aired in 1999, meaning that Ickis, Ablina, and Crumb were on TV screens for the very last time since their show ended two years earlier. In the end, everyone pretty much ignores this crossover and instead looks over to Rugrats Go Wild since that was a huge deal back then. Number 4. The Loud House and The Legends of the Hidden Temple. When I say the sentence, the Loud House should cross over with blank, then you're probably thinking of Spongebob or some other popular show that would make sense. But what took everyone by surprise is when there was an episode all about Lincoln and his dad going on the real life Nickelodeon game show, Legends of the Hidden Temple. This was simply called Legends and it tests this father-son relationship as they must work together to win big. Because these are both Nick properties, seeing them combined makes some sense I guess, but why did it even happen at all? Keep in mind, this is the first real crossover episode in the entire series, meaning that the crew could have decided to do several other different shows, but they still went with a random game show from the 90s. Grab my tail, son! Thanks for the assist, Dad! There's no escaping me! Plus, this was live action while the Loud House is a cartoon, so how exactly did Lincoln teleport to the real world to play? Okay, I'm reading way too deeply into this whole thing, but it really just feels like a missed opportunity. Don't get me wrong, the episode wasn't bad and it was a classic Loud House wholesomeness, but seeing Lincoln step on Legends of the Hidden Temple stage was so weird. What's even stranger about this whole situation is that it isn't even the first time a Nicktoon character goes on a classic game show. Sanjay and Craig did one all about Trumbull Day which was clearly inspired by the popular Double Dare. If the Loud House were to ever do another crossover, hopefully it'll fit more to the cartoon format, though with Nickelodeon's very limited modern cartoon lineup, I don't see a really good one happening anytime soon. Number 3. Tom and Jerry and Willy Wonka Tom and Jerry is a series following the typical formula of cat and mouse and slapstick comedy with wacky hijinks going on all the time. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a movie about a boy who receives a golden ticket and heads to a glorious candy factory with some other lucky winners to take a tour of the place. And now I have to ask you, what do these things have in common? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Congratulations! We have a winner, you guessed it right. The similarities between these two is absolutely nothing. Welcome. Everything here is edible. Eatable. I mean, you can eat it. To the world. Come on, guys. The ride might get a little rough. Of Wonka. 
Whoever thought of this Tom and Jerry Willy Wonka crossover was probably throwing darts at two random different properties and when they landed on each of these popular franchises, they said, Uh, Tom and Jerry go to the chocolate factory, great fun, yay! It's really hard to believe we live in the timeline where this sort of film exists, and it's even harder to believe that some people actually go out of their way to buy it. Even if you approach this crossover with an open mind and think, maybe it's not too bad, you'll still be disappointed to realize the actual story. Instead of doing anything fresh, fresh and new, everything happening is basically the same as a classic Willy Wonka movie, but the twist is that Tom and Jerry go around doing their wacky shenanigans in the background of everything. The only good statement I have to say about this crossover idea is the animation quality, which is pleasing on the eyes. But still, that comes with a negative because so many people spent their time and effort making this movie, and the nice animation could have gone to a project that actually had uniqueness and fun to it. Probably the most hilarious part about this is how, right under the title, it says, Original Movie. Ugh, is it really? Can you actually call this original? Putting two popular, unrelated things together and calling it an original animated movie is far from it, Warner Brothers. Number 2. Uncle Grandpa and Steven Universe Right out of the ocean, a very strange but familiar character appears and comes face to face with none other than Steven Universe. Whoa you guys, it's Rose Quartz! Nah, you've been bamboozled, it's actually just Uncle Grandpa, and this crossover is definitely one of the weirdest in the world of animation. Oh my gosh, Uncle Grandpa! You're really here? I can't believe it! I mean, I literally can't believe it. How is this even possible? Don't worry, bro. None of this is canon. Say Uncle airs towards the beginning of Season 2 in Steven Universe, and it caught fans completely off guard because they had absolutely no idea what to think of it. The only real similarity between these two shows is that they both air on Cartoon Network, but other than that, they're incredibly different. One's focused on random humor and a wacky character doing wacky stuff, and the other is story-driven with a serious storyline involving high stakes. Say Uncle is a very fast-paced crossover episode, as there are gags every single minute it and Uncle Grandpa confirms that none of this is canon. If I have to be completely honest, as weird as this crossover is, I actually thought it was hilarious. The surprise factor plays a big role because you never know how the characters of Pizza Steve and Steven will go together or what the Crystal Gems will think of Uncle Grandpa. This is probably one of the funniest SU episodes just because of how unexpected it is and it has to be my favorite one out of the seven I'm talking about. Say Uncle was created as an April Fool's prank so the fandom shouldn't take it too seriously. Many people people immediately hate on it because it's a dumb combination of two shows, but if you haven't seen Steven Universe meeting Uncle Grandpa yet, I highly recommend checking it out for the comedy alone. And number one, Scooby-Doo and WWE. When viewers were first introduced to the popular mystery solving gang of Mystery Incorporated back in 1969, I doubt anyone watched it and thought, hmm, this would be incredible if it had a crossover with WWE. Nobody wanted that, but uh, it's confirmed confirmed that these two take place in the same universe and nothing about it makes sense. It all began in 2014 when the direct-to-DVD film Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery hit shelves. The story of this crossover involves Scooby and the rest of the gang trying to discover the answer to a mystery at WrestleMania. The box art promises that Scooby will be able to meet the man, the myth, the legend, John Cena! And you bet your bottom dollar this meetup happens. John Cena! Whoa! While I haven't actually seen the full movie and can't confirm if it's worth watching, the IMDb rating is alright. Honestly, a 6 to 7 out of 10 is much higher than I expected for a crossover that doesn't seem to make much sense, but I guess Scooby-Doo is such a classic formula and not even a weird mix with WWE can ruin that. Apparently, WrestleMania was so popular that a second Scooby-Doo WWE movie was created titled Curse of the Speed Demon. Oh, and if you do some extra digging, you'll see that this popular wrestling phenomenon even spawned an animated movie featuring the Flintstones. Why do all these nonsensical crossovers exist? Clearly for money, but the weirdest part is how people actually buy the movies in the first place. Anyway, that's all for this video. Subscribe for more awesome cartoon videos, give a thumbs up, and comment below to let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.